My dad and I, nearly adult female, started therapy three weeks ago. Last week, during our third session, I opened up bluntly about how I feel like my dad let me down and failed me by prioritizing being married and his own happiness. This was not the first time I tried speaking openly to my dad about this. Still, it's the first time he said he appeared willing to listen and the first time he took the harm it was doing to our relationship seriously. Let me explain. My mom died when I was just a baby and my dad was a single dad until I was four. It was then he met my stepmom, his wife Sharon. Sharon was a divorced mom with a tween son and a pre-tween daughter. They got married when I was five. Sharon's kids and my step-siblings never liked me. They always hated me. When my dad and Sharon first married, I considered them my siblings and loved them, but they were really mean to me. They'd say they hated me, everyone hated me, and I should leave. They encouraged me to run away because nobody would miss me. They said I would never be their sister or their family, and I was a weirdo for calling them my siblings. Sharon noticed more than my dad, but I used to tell my dad and when things got bad I asked if we could leave. He tried to reassure me but was very dismissive of how much it hurt me. He told me we couldn't leave because Sharon was his wife and we are all a family now and you can't leave a family. Sharon only ever said anything when her kids made me cry. I have two half-siblings from my dad and Sharon. I was so excited when they were born and I bonded with them. I loved helping and playing with them. But then my step-siblings decided to use them against me, and they were older and Sharon would let them do more. Eventually, they told our half-siblings that if they wanted to do cool stuff with them, they had to say no to playing with me, and rejecting me became normal. My younger siblings would repeat a lot of what my step-siblings would say to me. This continued even after my step-siblings moved out because they would take our younger siblings out or visit them and bring gifts. For the year to year, I have been withdrawn and I stopped trying. I don't try to do anything with my younger siblings. I don't hang out with dad like I used to and my focus is on moving out. My dad started to notice late last year and he sent me to a therapist and then decided family therapy was needed for the two of us. This is when last week happened. My dad looked really shocked at first and he was apologetic. After we got home, Sharon asked me why I had to be so hard on my dad. My dad and Sharon argued about it. I spent the rest of last week trying to be alone with my thoughts. Our next session is tomorrow. Sharon apologized for saying what she did but reiterated that I handled it badly. My dad tried to talk to me since the appointment and I don't know how to talk to him anymore without our therapist. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It's bad enough that your dad and Sharon knew about your step-siblings bullying you, but the fact they didn't shut your step-siblings down when they played childish games with your half-siblings and manipulated them to be nasty to you as well tells me that they are bad parents. You have a right to be angry. Your dad is supposed to be your advocate and he failed you. Sounds like the stepmother is trying to shut OP down before her dad realizes. A. The abuse from step-siblings was worse than he thought, and B. Stepmother knew this and did nothing and was practically complicit. Honey, Sharon wanted a new daddy for her kids, not a new daughter to go along with that. Focus on yourself, be open during therapy, and be smart about planning for your future. The best thing for you to do for yourself is make a good life for yourself. Please tell your therapist about what you experienced during the last few days. I know it's hard and you probably feel like a snitch for doing so. Spoiler, you are not. But they can only help you and your dad when they know what's happening. Sharon is probably worried that you will blow up their relationship and is trying to do damage control by gaslighting you into feeling guilty. Also, there's something very wrong going on with your step-siblings. Either way, focus on moving out and living your best life. Good luck, kiddo. I'm 39 and male. My wife is 36. We have two sons, a kindergartner and a toddler. Two years ago, my wife approached me one day and told me she was interested in making money off Instagram. I thought it was a fine idea as she was home during the day and couldn't work because our younger son was still too small. Fortunately, I make enough money to support our lifestyle comfortably and I encouraged her to go for it. Unfortunately, in the past two years as a hopeful Instagram influencer, she hasn't made a single cent. Her earlier attempts at gaining followers were for postpartum fitness, and since she knows nothing about fitness, that went nowhere. She tried to make exercise guides where she would do these bizarre mobility movements, and these would only get a few views. She moved on to doing makeup tutorials, which similarly felt flat, likely because there are a billion such channels out there. 
Then she jumped onto this slice of life train where she would make videos talking about her day, but to be frank, they were all pretty boring and she failed to attract any attention. The issue isn't that she's trying, the problem is that she spends most of her waking hours on Instagram and skirts her household responsibilities. I wake up at 5am, go for a run, come home, make breakfast for everyone, then make lunch for our older child and myself, and take him to kindergarten. I go to work until about 5pm, get home around 5.30, make dinner for everyone, wash most of the dishes, tidy up, bathe our sons, play with them, and go to bed. She wakes up at 7.45, usually later because she was up late on Instagram, and lies down on the sofa as I do everything. While I'm at work, she works on her Instagram more. Any attempt to get her to do something is met with complaining. The other day, I finally got fed up with her because I walked in the door to a complete disaster zone of things strewn everywhere, the laundry not done, and a sink full of dirty dishes. I asked what she'd done all day, to which she responded she was busy. I snapped at her and told her that her Instagram was going nowhere, that I'd put up for it for two years longer than I should have, and that she would be infinitely more useful cooking and cleaning. She got this horrified look on her face and walked away. She went into the bedroom, naturally looking at her phone, and left me to deal with everything that night. Am I the idiot for how I reacted to her? Not the idiot. There's a reason that these things are usually side hustles until they go big. It's hard to make it. Having no job, bringing in no income, and contributing nothing to the household is not a realistic way to be a good partner. Could you have worded it better or been more tactful? Sure, but I get how you would just kind of snap in the moment. A side hustle might be selling something on Etsy or similar. That would be a side hustle because even if it doesn't go big, it's still small in terms of returns, maybe a few hundred a year. This isn't a side hustle. It's a distraction and a waste of time. I'm amazed OP's put up with it this long. OP, tell her to switch her content to cleaning tips. She thought being an influencer would be easy, but she was wrong. Whatever it takes to be an influencer, she isn't a good fit. Be very careful she doesn't try turning her hand and video camera to mommy blogging because that can quickly turn exploitative and she's looking for social media validation. My boyfriend and I are both men. My family wasn't happy when I came out, but they've mostly stopped voicing their opinions openly. I know they still talk about it privately, but at least they don't say anything to our faces. It took some time for them to warm up to my boyfriend, but now they actively include him in conversations, and my 87-year-old grandma called him a very lovely young man while pinching his cheek, which is a very high form of approval from her. The one thing they still don't like us to do in front of them is when we act like a couple. They actually try to keep us separate most of the time to not give us a chance to do something as scandalous as holding hands or kissing. We were invited to one of my cousin's birthday parties this afternoon. At some point, my boyfriend and I were alone in the kitchen, and I, thinking he looked very cute and kissable then, committed the ultimate sin. I called him something along the lines of, my pretty doll, and gave him a quick kiss. Of course, one of my cousins had to enter the kitchen at that exact moment, and because she's a five-year-old, who probably didn't know that we're a couple, and has never seen us be affectionate, ran off to excitedly tell the other kids what she saw, which was met with the typical childish reactions of disgust mixed with curiosity. My favourite was actually my nephew asking me if that means that my boyfriend is my wife now. The adults didn't find that as funny though, and I had to listen to my mother scold me for almost 30 minutes. When she finally let me go, my boyfriend asked if we could leave. I told him we'd stay for dinner and leave immediately after. Now comes the part where I might, and probably am, the idiot. I made a point of holding my boyfriend's hand while we walked back to the table and asked one of my nieces if she'd switch seats so my boyfriend and I could sit next to each other. During dinner, I kept asking my boyfriend to hand me things on the table while addressing him by nicknames and giving him a peck on the cheek here and there. To say the mood was awkward would be an understatement. The adults mostly ignored us and glared at us every few seconds while the younger kids kept giggling every time I called my boyfriend darling or sweetheart. My boyfriend was uncomfortable and barely looked up from his plate. We left immediately after dinner was finished. My boyfriend was very quiet on our way home and when we got home he broke down crying. I comforted him as best as possible but I know it's my fault that he's also upset. Later in the evening my mother also sent me a long message telling me that our behaviour was immature and inappropriate and that we wouldn't be welcome at another family gathering until we stopped forcing our choices on everyone. So, am I the idiot for purposefully acting inappropriately with my boyfriend? 
You are the idiot, and to be honest, my reasoning for that isn't because of your rubbing your relationship in your family's face. I feel like that's petty, although maybe understandable. It's because of what you put your boyfriend through. In trying to make a point to your family, you made him so uncomfortable and upset that he was driven to tears. That is absolutely no way to treat someone you're meant to care about. You should have left before dinner when he asked, or at least checked in with your boyfriend to see if he was comfortable with your plan, and absolutely stopped the minute you noticed his discomfort. I hope you've started apologizing profusely to him. He probably feels like crap for being used as a pawn in a game against your family. Yeah, your boyfriend is not your make-my-family-angry prop. I hope he dumps your toxic butt. You need to lay off the hooch. It impairs your judgment. Forcing your partner to stay somewhere they were uncomfortable so you could make a spectacle of yourself is an idiot move all day, any day. Caring partners want to support their significant other, not to exploit them for their own amusement. At someone's birthday, no less. I didn't think this was a huge deal, but my friend was acting like I was five seconds away from causing the scandal of the century. So I moved to London a few months ago and my friend, Eleanor from uni, was nice enough to introduce me to her group of friends since she grew up here. I spent a lot of time with her friends and they're slowly becoming my friends. We spend most weekends together and even took a spontaneous weekend trip to Spain last month. There's this guy in the group who's ridiculously attractive, but Eleanor warned me he wouldn't be interested when I first told her about my crush. She honestly made me think he was gay and the way she said it, and he always ignores the female attention he gets on nights out, so I really did think he was gay. He also doesn't wear a wedding ring. He's never brought his wife when we go out, not even when we went to Spain. So I was shocked yesterday when I saw him walk over and touch a woman sitting with his best friend's wife. I asked one of the girls who she was and she told me she was his wife. I was shocked so I blurted out, that's his wife? I didn't mean anything bad about it, but my tone showed how shocked I was, and Eleanor misunderstood so she told me to shut up. The girl I asked gave me weird looks, so maybe my tone wasn't what I intended. Eleanor dragged me away from the other girl to tell me not to say anything about his wife because supposedly he's ridiculously protective over her. The group would quickly turn against me if the guy thought I was saying something negative about his wife, which is super dramatic. I tried to explain I thought he was gay, and that's why I was shocked. But Eleanor thought I was lying, so she kept telling me to just be nice to his wife and not say anything bad about her because it would cause problems for her too. I really think she's being dramatic. It's not like I said she was ugly. I was just shocked he was married. During the night, Eleanor went out of her way to introduce me to his wife, but I didn't say much because Eleanor had made it so awkward for me that I didn't want to say the wrong thing. She was also really quiet, so it was hard to have a conversation with her, especially since her husband or his friend's wife were always hovering around her. Today, they're all hanging out and I wasn't invited. I don't know for sure if it was because of this, but it was. Am I the idiot? That's his wife equals it's crazy that he would be with a woman who looks like that. That's his wife equals you thought he was single or gay. OP, you are the idiot and she's more beautiful than you can understand and you don't stand a chance. I love it, ha ha, but the more tactful response is still, he has a wife? That's an exclamation of surprise at his marital status without mentioning her and creating a perceived slight. Any kind of, that's his wife, is a faux pas at best and a deliberate insult at worst. Really, anything that focused on the marriage instead of the wife would have been better. Overall, OP's obsession with him is creepy and weird. Why is she trying so hard to figure out if he's gay or straight or taken or single? Why does it matter? Why does it matter to the point where she blurts out words when she sees his wife? She's being neurotic and weird. That's probably why everyone is acting wary of her. She's making it clear she's going to cause drama by overreacting to normal crap and overanalyzing everything. I'm a single mom to triplets, girls, teens. Usually for our birthdays, I give them $150 each to take their friends to dinner and they go to different restaurants. They want a big party with a DJ, a venue and lots of invites for their upcoming birthday. A venue would be around $500 US dollars and with all the additional things like decorations, DJ invites and food, it would be around $1,200 to $1,400 and that's the cheapest we can do. I can afford that once, but they want three individual parties, which would be over $4,000. I told them no, I couldn't afford $4,000 for a birthday party. 
I could throw three smaller parties, but it would be a considerable hassle deciding who gets to have the party on their actual birthday, as I can't plan three parties in one day. They have a lot of common family and friends. I was willing to do it anyway, but a smaller party means no venue, no DJ, and cheaper food and drinks, and my daughters aren't okay with that. I tried explaining that I can't afford it, but they just told me to get an extra job. One of them is mad they can't have their own party. I told them the budget was 1200 and they could figure out how to spend it. Should I get an extra job? Am I the idiot? Edit. Honestly, the main reason they act this way is because we were more well-off before my husband left me. We could afford to throw our kids' individual parties previously, and now that we can't anymore, they're angry. Not the idiot, but you definitely messed up raising your daughters. How can you be that entitled? Even 1200 bucks is a lot. They're old enough to get a job. If they want to spend more money than what you have, they should work for it. This is insane. I'm actually angry just by reading that. LOL, I'm trying to imagine what would happen if I told my mother to get another job to pay for a party. Not only would my party be cancelled, but I'm pretty sure my phone, TV, hot water and anything else she paid for would be gone until I grovel for forgiveness. She certainly wouldn't be saying, oh, you'll just have to make do with over a thousand dollars. Yeah, I'd be living in the chicken coop, LOL. My parents didn't spend $1,200 in total for all our birthday parties, and I'm one of six kids. $1,200 for one party is insane. OP, I'm sorry, but it shows that you both failed at parenting them. I don't know the whole story. I don't know when your husband left. I didn't come from a well-off background, but I do have friends and family who have entitled children who grew up to be well-rounded teenagers and adults. Well-rounded children who were taught the value of money and work early on.